what has been the what was what has been the hot issue discussed in all the media is the migration of um, people migrating from Middle East and Africa and uh, entering Europe. So that issue, that the human being, people who are almost all of them are vulnerable group of the society, children, women, disabled men, elders, all of them are everyone who was able to escape from the death, from the bombardment, from the uh, all kinds of tanks and uh, rivalries is trying to cross rivers and oceans and mountains in order to read, to get a safe haven where at least they can survive. Um, and then they cross to Europe. So in Islam, what is the position of Islam in migration? That is our topic now. The migration that we are talking about is the migration mentioned in the Quran from the very beginning in many, many verses of the Quran. And a hadith is mentioned. And that one, that migration is the same one which is going on today. You may hear that many people are saying that uh, Muslims to migrate, it is only that they migrate from a country that's not predominantly uh, non-Muslim or where Islam, uh, there's no Muslim people, and then they immigrate, they immigrate to a Muslim state. That's what we may hear from some people. But today, what is the reality? What is the, the fact on the ground we have? Is that people are migrating from the Muslim countries and fleeing, fleeing to non-Muslim countries. So now, what is that? It is the opposite. Not only that, we have Muslims migrating from a Muslim country to a non-Muslim country, but we have people migrating from Mecca and Medina and migrating to either to US or to Canada. Then we have to question back and review the verses of the Quran that are mentioning migration. What are they talking about? They are really talking about the one we have see we, we see it practically. That someone who is running away from where he or she or them cannot say cannot sustain their life because of insecurity, their property because of insecurity, their wealth, their dignity their race or ethnicity, and their lineage even. They can sustain there. They cannot keep them and protect their life in that country and their religion. So in, then they come away to another place where they see it as a safe haven, where they can at least protect themselves from a, a, a potential enemy. So. Uh, to look at this, Islam has the basic human rights, it has already ordained us, all the human rights. And in fact, if you compare between the uh, International Convention of Refugees, or Human Rights, even, the International Convention on Refugees of, of 1950, if you look at all the articles, you can find you can see that they are matching with those of the Islam, in the Quran and the Hadith and the Sunnah and the Muslim. They are typical like, like that. So what brought us to this level, then we have to think twice. It means when now when we read some verses of the Quran that are talking about the migration, about the human rights, about refugees, about social welfare, we, could, we, we feel like kind of surprising. 
what is that high in the Quran? But it is there in the Quran, not even one and two, more than three and four or five. But our problem is that we keep reciting it very quickly and not bordering our age. So today, that's what I'm touch touching is the that influx of migration to Europe. First of all, what I would say is that we are indebted to thank to Europe. Most of the European states, they welcome them, regardless of their small states, there to the continent, which is the smallest of the seven continents in the world. And still, they have that sympathy to welcome destitute refugees who are running barefooted. So we, we have to appreciate that and give them time. While those innocent people were chased away and expelled from their houses by their own people, who just are power hunter people. Then we have to see that and, and, and uh, give that appreciation. Why do we appreciate and thank and give compliment to them? Is that what the Quran says? The Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, says in this verse, لِلْفَقَرَاءِ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ If I read all of it in English, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, a portion of the social welfare, that's government treasure, is for the poor immigrants who were expelled from their homes and their properties. And after that, they are seeking bounties of Allah. They, they just want to escape with their life. And they are running to Allah. And at the same time, they are looking for a safe haven where they can worship Allah to please Allah, the Almighty. And then that's how they help Allah and His Messenger. Such are indeed truthful people. Of what they are truthful of what they say and what they do because they um, add it into action. That means migration, uh, when it comes to necessity to migrate from the location where you are feeling is a, the threat of your life and your religion and your dignity, then you migrate. That is mandatory in Islam. It's not even a, an op optional, but it's requirement because you must save your life. There's another verse which is explaining that, and I will come to it soon, inshallah. But continuously, this verse, Allah is saying, that is ayah, uh, is verse number 8 and number 9 of Surah al hashr And number 10 says, and it is also for those who before them, who had, those who were before them in that area, those who are hosting them, they had homes <laughs> there, and they welcomed them, and they have adapted the faith of the faith of love, or for those who migrated to them. So they have taken the faith of love to love people to migrate to them. They love people to migrate to them, to come to them and visit them. And when they see that, they become happy. So that happiness. Even happiness only to show sympathy is something which is really very, very important and Allah rewards, gives reward to those people. And today we see those who were kicked off their houses by their own people. Now, when they are in the streets, in the jungle of Europe, there are some innocent some people who are really faithful coming with, with baskets of food and fruits, is standing in the streets and waiting for those people to come. Imagine. They are just standing there and waiting for somebody who's crossing the ass on the ground. And they're handing to them food. So, who is the real Muslim today? Look at this. So when you see when you look at them, when you, you see the media, if you don't feel that sympathy, then your faith is not yet conquered. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ They love those who migrated to them, those who came to them, even if they didn't have sufficient, they didn't have enough food to provide, they didn't have enough shelters, but still they want to share whatever they have with them. And then they don't feel jealousy, they don't feel uh, that they selfishness, and in their hearts they don't feel any enmity, selfishness, and jealousy for uh, those people. So they don't even, f uh, they are not afraid of poverty because of what they have given to that people, and they give preference over themselves. They give them something that they themselves didn't even have. What they didn't eat, they give to them. And that is exactly how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his era Muslims were. They used to welcome guests, and those guests, when they come to them, they used to pretend that they have already eaten, and their children have, were fed with them, and they distributed to them. So they used to feed guests, immigrants like that, in that way. So, even though they were in need of that property, even if they didn't have enough space for them, and whoever is saved from his own catapults, uh, those who were saved from their selfishness, such are those who will be successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us very clearly now that it is the basic faith that you love to have guests in your world, in your house, to invite them, to welcome them, and feed them. It's the, one of the top priorities in the faith of Islam. In, if you look at any verses talking about giving charity, most always those verses say to you, with al qurba wal yatama wal masakin wal nasabil they will say to you give the charity to your close relatives and your family to your then close relatives and the the orphans and then uh, the wal nasabil then after that are uh, those who are travelers land those who are traveling on the land or in the sea then you welcome them. Those are the real people who are in need of help, and that's how you give charity. It's unfortunate nowadays. Our charity, we change it to ceremonies, just to what in Arabic call azuma. So azuma and sadaqa are two different things. Sadaqa charity is what you give to a poor people, the person who is in need of it. But Azuma invitation for food is that you give to your friends and have a, a, a kind of celebration and events in your house. So the one you are getting through for it, or it is the charity for the poor people. That's why the Quran always repeats what necessarily the people of the road, that is to the, those who are traveling or and those who were transamped, who were hijacked and you pay ransom and take them out of that. And those who are welcoming them. My dear brothers and sisters, Islam is this one, which repeatedly is talking about human rights in detail, talking about migration, refugees, and all that in details. And what Quran and the Hadith says, are exactly what we find today from the non-Muslims, and we don't see it within the Muslim countries. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says in the Quran, 
قالوا كنا مستضعفين في الأرض قالوا ألم تكن أرض الله واسعة فتهاجر فيها فأولئك مأواهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا الله is telling us in this verse in Surah Al-Nisa ayah number 97 Allah is telling us that in the Ladina Tawfahum Al-Malaikatu indeed look at those who are, the angels will come when they are taking their souls they will come to them and they will ask them Qalu Fima Kuntum what is your what has been your condition what has been your situation in the world then they would say, "Qalu kunna mustadafina fil ardi." We would have been, we were weak people, and we were, uh, we were oppressed, and we were under pressure. We couldn't do anything good. We could not practice even Islam. We were very weak. Then the angels are asking them, "Qalu alam takum ardullahi wa saatun fatahatu fiha?" Isn't that the earth of Allah? The land of Allah is expanded and enlarged, and so that for Tuhajir Rufiya, then you migrate from your location where you have been situated in it, you migrate from there to a place where it's safe. If you could not afford to defend yourself, to defend your civic and liberty rights, you cannot defend all that your properties and uh, everything that you own then it is simple that you live there and go to another place where there is secure security and safety and when you go there from there you can you will be able then and I'll, 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 the continuous the eye is saying didn't you know that the earth of Allah is expanded and large and there are many places that you could have gone. For Allah, I come out of Jahannam wa Sa'ad Then, in conclusion, those people, their abode is Jahannam, and it is the worst, the worst somebody may do it. From uh, reading this verse, you can see it's very clear that when you have been threatened or abused or uh, uh, tortured in one place and you cannot defend yourself there and you have no protection the choice you have is to live there and flee to another area where there is safety so that one is compulsory this, is, uh, this, this verse is telling us that you should migrate from the place where which is, is not safe for you and go to a safe place when it's saying that, always when Quran is talking about this, what the Quran evaluates is our uh, five basic human rights, which are life, property, dignity, mind, psychological uh, uprightness. Uh, like that, somebody is always attacking your dignity, and you cannot defend yourself. And as so, somebody is abusing your psychological mind. So that psychological war also is a real physical war. And then your nationhood. The government, for example, doesn't want you to take your lineage, your names. They will say to change your name. And then and the other thing is ethnicity. They are against your nationhood and ethnic, uh, ethnic. Then you have your right. Is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advise you at this level is to migrate from there and great from that place to a good place. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering also the other part, those who host uh, refugees, Allah is giving this order by saying, This is also in Surah Tawbah, ayah number 7. Allah is saying, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرُهُ فَأَجِرُهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَهُ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمُ اللَّهِ يَعْلَمُونَ If any one of the politicians, idolaters, beggars, disbelievers, and so on seeks your protection, then grant them protection. 
give them give him or her or them protection so that they may they may hear the words of Allah when they are there with you. Not that you force them that they convert to Islam, but if they go into that environment, they will hear it and then they will hopefully they may become Muslim. If they don't become, then you cannot also threat them, you cannot force them. What is your obligation again? When you welcome them and give them good hospitality, then the second option is that if they need to go back, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is here, is saying, um, then escort them into where to where he can be or she can be secure. You have to escort them. That is typical repatriation. You know the UNHCR when they went refugees when they went to send back to their countries, they give them some kinds of allowance so that when they reach there, they can establish themselves in that location. That's exactly what Quran uh, Allah is telling us in this verse of the Quran. You you give them something that they can go with that journey, uh, uh, material, and at the same time you escort them. Because when they are, before they cross your border, or as soon as they cross your border, if they have been attacked, then it is your fault. You have to escort them until where they need, and they believe it is secure for them. That is because they are people who do not know. The Allah is telling, is telling us, if they don't accept Islam, it's not your, 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 your fault. You, you only welcome them to, to the Muslim nation, and then hopefully they will hear Islam and accept. If not, then it's not your problem. Or because they are original, they didn't know about this. So you have to look at the people's level of education also and experience. And you have to escort them and take them to, after you escort them, you escort them to their place which is secure for them. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning us also in our verse in the Quran, how refugees contribute to wherever they go to, which we practically see today, that the, the refugees, they contribute to the country, to the building of the country where they can end. The economic booming, the uh, development, progressing of both as humanity and materially all. And they, because firstly, they will start working with less wages and will have jobs. And they are sincere because they are willing to work and get even some payments. And they pay taxation. And then that is, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises and thanks to anyone who migrates from where he has been tortured to a safe place and the one who welcomes them. So both the uh, refugee and the host people are praising and complimenting in the Quran. So there, therefore, that is what the meaning of refugees is. In